Well, friends, what an enormous privilege we have on this feast of the baptism of the Lord to celebrate in this place, because there, right behind us, I think the most magnificent of all the tapestries, that beautiful depiction of the baptism of the Lord. So maybe keep that image fixed in your mind as I preach this morning. You know, about 20 years ago, I had the privilege of meeting Godfrey Diekman. Godfrey was a monk of St. John's Abbey up in Collegeville, Minnesota. Maybe not a household name, but he had a huge impact on the church in the 20th century because Godfrey was the editor of this um, theological journal about the liturgy. He led, in many ways, the liturgical movement of the 20th century, which led to Vatican II. In fact, Godfrey was at Vatican II. He knew uh, John the 23rd, Paul the Sixth. He helped to write the document on the liturgy. So a major player in the life of the church, someone who had fought all kinds of battles. Well, I met him when he was about 92 through a mutual friend. And when I met him, Godfrey was in a wheelchair and he had this uh, cane always in his right hand, but a very lively fellow, full of humor and full of stories and energy. So after a while, when I got to know him a little bit better, I said, Godfrey, if you were young again, and you could mount the barricades, what would you fight for in the life of the church? And I was sitting across from him, and I'll never forget, he brought the cane down on my knee. Boom. And he said, the mystical body. It wasn't the answer I was expecting. The mystical body. It was the central idea for Godfrey Diekman. It was the central idea for most of the leaders of the liturgical movement. What does it mean? It means that we, members of the church, are not just members of the Jesus Christ Society. Oh, here's this distant figure whom we remember fondly. We've gathered together to keep his ideals alive, the way you'd be a member of the Abraham Lincoln Society. Mm -mm, Mm-mm, mm-mm. Something much more than that. Something much stranger, more dramatic, more challenging. Rather, we are cells, molecules, organs in this living body of Christ. We've been grafted onto him in such a way that he now endeavors to live his life in us. See, no member of the Abraham Lincoln Society thinks that Lincoln is living his life in them. No, no, they're they're admiring him. You know, this distant historical figure, wasn't he wonderful? Oh, but that's not the church, everybody. That's not the church. The church is that organism, that living thing, that body of which Jesus is the head and we are the active members. That was the idea that galvanized Godfrey Diekman and what he would fight for in the life of the church today. You know, the great biblical references, St. Paul, of course, talks about the, the body of Christ of which we are members. But go back to the conversion of Saul. Remember that great scene? Saul on the road to Damascus, knocked to the ground, sees the light. And what does he hear? Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He didn't say, why are you persecuting those people that believe in me? Why are you persecuting those churches off in Damascus? No, no. Why are you persecuting me? Because the church is Christ's living body. To persecute the church is to persecute him. Or Matthew 25, when Jesus says those words that still echo challengingly in our hearts. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, You do it to me. This is not Abraham Lincoln talking about his society. No, no, this is the head of a living mystical body of which we are members. Now, how do you get into the mystical body, if I can speak bluntly? Baptism. Baptism. We are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That means, listen, that we've entered into the dynamics of the Trinity itself. Sons and daughters in the Son, we are now in an intimate living relationship to God the Father. 
More to it, the love that connects the Father and the Son is the Holy Spirit. To be baptized is now to be drawn into the very life of God. Notice whenever we pray, we just did it a few minutes ago, we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, thereby remembering our baptism. You see what that means? We don't pray outside of God. There's God up there somewhere, and I'm outside praying to him. No, no, that's not how baptized people pray. They pray, look, within the dynamics of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We pray within God, within God, because we are members of Christ's mystical body. Okay, three implications from this. And look around, by the way, the tapestry back there, the baptism, but now listen, the implications of the baptism are all around us. We are connected to one another the way organs in a body are connected. Now, I know this is difficult for us Americans to get because we're predicated so much upon an individualistic philosophy. Look how litigious our society is because of my rights. Don't violate my rights. Who are you to step on my rights? And I won't step on your rights, but don't, don't step on mine. See, we tend to be individualistic. My life's about me and protecting my interests. Whatever society we have is by a sort of social contract. We agree to enter into this contract. But then there's the church. Like it or not, as a baptized person, a member of the living mystical body of Christ, you are connected to all baptized people across the ages. Yes, every one of these saints, brothers and sisters to us. But now, now, press it, not just the saints, but the good, the bad, the ugly, the indifferent, everybody who's baptized is connected to us the way organs in a body are connected to each other. How ridiculous if the lungs were to say to the liver that is affected by cancer, that's your problem. I'm not gonna worry about that, that's your problem. How ludicrous, how ridiculous. In very short order, that problem in the liver will become a problem in the lungs. It'll become a problem for the whole body. And therefore, everybody, how ludicrous of us to say, oh, the suffering of that person over there, my, my brother or sister in the mystical body, that's not my problem. I, I'm not worried about that. I'm going to go to sleep peacefully. Maybe I'll say a little prayer, but I, I mean, I'm not that concerned about that person's suffering. Their problem is your problem. My problem is your problem. We're all connected. We are connected to each other. Which is why the corporal and spiritual works of mercy make so much sense once you realize the implication of your baptism. Of course, of course I'm on for extending mercy to everybody. Here's a second implication. If baptism means the beginning of Christ's life in us, it's the beginning of the divine life in us. What else do we need? We need the other sacraments. Do you know we're living in a time right now, it's one of the most disturbing statistics you'll see. When Catholics, members of this mystical body, are in huge numbers staying away from the sacraments. How many come to Mass? 25% maybe, 20%. Baptisms are falling off in parishes around the country. Fewer and fewer people bringing their kids to be baptized. Marriages are falling off. How ludicrous that is. If baptism gives us the life, right, you need those things that will sustain that life. What if there's a little baby, newly brought in the world, never fed, never given to drink, what will happen? The baby will die in short order. What's the Eucharist? Why are we here? The Eucharist is the feeding of the divine life within us. Without it, we'll starve to death. Quite right. What happens if we get sick in the physical order? Well, we go to get treated. We go to a doctor. We take medicine. 
Do we get sick spiritually? All the time. It's called sin. Mortal sin will put to death the life in us. That's why we call it mortal sin. Where's the doctor? Where's the medicine? The sacrament of reconciliation. Oh, I haven't been to, I haven't been to the reconciliation in 30 years. And you, you're wondering why you're so sick spiritually? What's marriage? Holy orders. Ways of ordering life to a purpose. Everybody, the sacraments are the indispensable sustainers of the life within us. Here's the last connection. And again, with these saints around us in mind. We're the mystical body. That means we are in direct continuity with Christ in his historical body. So we hear that the word, the word of God became flesh, took to himself a human nature, that of Jesus of Nazareth. And he walked the earth for 30-some years. There's the first incarnation. But there is, in Catholic theology, a kind of second incarnation. That's when that same word, Jesus, that same word, Christ, takes to himself now his mystical body. Us. Us. Who are we? His mind, his heart, his feet, his hands, his eyes. Every one of these people around us, members of the mystical body in their time, functioned as the means by which Christ was continually transforming his world. Thomas Aquinas, through the exercise of his magnificent mind, Thomas More with the witness of his life, Catherine of Siena with her mystical prayer. Look at all the saints and the martyrs, the teachers, the witnesses. Every one of us, every one of us baptized people, were given gifts, charisms, that we were meant to exercise in this world so that Christ might continually surge into it. Are we cooperating? There's the great question for today. For all of us, members of the mystical body, are we cooperating? What's your charism? Nothing more important in life, by the way. Nothing more important in life than realizing, understanding what our charism is, and then exercising it. Do you ever find yourself saying, Lord, why don't you act? You know, in, in the face of the terrible struggles and difficulties and violence of the world, Lord, why, why don't you act? Could I suggest you should always transform that prayer into a call to mission for you. How does Christ act now but through us? Lord, why don't you do something? Hear, please, a tiny voice saying, well, why don't you do something? Because I've given you gifts so that I can continue to be operative in the world. If we opt out, Christ's grace will not surge into the world. And so keep that image, please, in mind today. Keep the image of Christ being baptized by John. But then see yourself in that position. Members of the mystical body, connected to each other, fed and sustained by the sacraments, and gifted with a mission, with a mission, everybody, that we are meant to exercise for the transfiguration of the world.